Some of you may know me from my videos as Timberwolf. Today, the question is snakes. And don't get me wrong, by no means am I like a herpetologist or an expert or anything like that. You know, I've grown up catching snakes, stuff like that. As far as the Appalachian Trail goes, there are really four venomous types that you're gonna encounter. Uh, the first one we're gonna cover is the rattlesnake. Now the rattlesnake you're gonna see out here is the Eastern Diamondback. It's the biggest of the rattlesnake families. The average length is probably around four to six feet. Some of them are reaching up to eight feet. And they have a pretty wide girth to them and they have several different venom types. Most of the rattlesnakes you're gonna see out here have the hemotoxin venom. It affects the blood and the interior organ. One of the other types is a neurotoxin venom. That affects your nervous system. Now the neurotoxin it is a faster way for the venom to affect you versus the hemotoxin it's a slow process and really painful. It's a cousin or relative to the next snake we're going to talk about. It's the timber rattlesnake. Now the timber rattlesnakes, they're still highly venomous. They range from 30 to 60 inches. Some of them, very rare, but some of them do reach up to lengths of six feet. Now they're substantially thinner than the Eastern Diamondback, but their venom is still pretty toxic. Now most deaths occur from the, the, from the timber rattlesnake within six to 48 hours of being bitten. Now, if you can get antivenom within two hours, your recovery rate is increased by 99%. Now, this snake, it's a little bit different than the eastern diamondback. The timber rattlesnake will actually control how much venom it pumps into you. And that's done by the glands it has by the back of its head. I have a picture that I'll show you on that. It's also known as the the cane break rattlesnake or the banded rattlesnake. They often live with like copperheads and black rat snakes. A lot of them live in like rocky areas. The third snake I'm gonna talk about is the copperhead. It averages in lengths of two to three feet. It has very similar looking snakes to it. An easy way of telling if it's a copperhead or not is the copperhead is the only snake that has like an hourglass pattern on it. And don't forget, these snakes, they have all different colors, you know, from gray to light brown, tan, some like chestnut colors. It is a beautiful snake. Now this is probably the most dangerous snake you're gonna encounter on like the Appalachian Trail. Its venom isn't really that bad and it will kill a human if you don't get help. But what makes these snakes so dangerous is they will bury their entire bodies, including their head, in the leaf. And if something steps near them, they won't even think. They're just going to react and strike. So to avoid these, you really need to be focused on where you're walking and be cautious of your environment. Fourth snake that's venomous that you're going to encounter is water moccasin. Now it's a cousin or relative to the copperhead, but its venom is a lot stronger. But the venom is still rarely fatal. Its length averages 30 to 48 inches and is typically found around water. <clears throat> How can I tell if a snake is venomous? There's several ways. One is by this picture. Most non-venomous snakes, they'll have a round pupil. Now, I'm not saying all, but most. If you look at the head on the non-venomous, it's more like a bullet shape. That's a good indicator that it's a non-venomous snake for our region. Now, the venomous one, you can see how it's kind of got a lifted up snout. That's a good sign that it's a pit viper and pit vi vipers are very venomous. Now if you look right here, you see this little dark circle. 
That's a pit viper's um, venom gland. That's where they store all the venom and it gets pumped directly in through its fangs. And here's a good indication of the vertical pupil. Now another way is look at the scales right behind the eyes. <clears throat> you see how they're a little bit more pattern shaped and wider or narrower rather versus the non-venom where you have fewer and they're wider. So nobody really wants to get near a snake's head out there. You know, they're not sure what it is and they don't want to take the chance. And I don't blame them. The best way to avoid, uh, to not be bit by a snake is just to avoid it. Now, if you see a snake laying across the trail, try to find some way of going around. Now, what happens if you do get bit? You know, there's all sorts of different myths out there on what you should do. After some extensive research, I found the best thing to do is just stay calm. Whatever snake you get bit by, the venom is going to be pumped through your blood. If your heart rate increases, it's going to pump your blood faster. So drop your pack, take a second, calm your heart rate down and either call for help if you have service or walk out, depending on how far you are, to try and get some help. The sooner you get help, the better off you're gonna be. Now what to do before you take off and try to get help. You wanna clean around the wound, but you don't wanna submerse it in water. Reason you wanna clean around the wound is the saliva of a snake can cause a really bad infection. So not only will you be dealing with the venom, you're going to be dealing with an infection. Now, these are two very controversial things. One is a tourniquet. They used to say, put a tourniquet on it. And you can, as long as it's loose. I personally steer away from a tourniquet because that's going to restrict blood flow. And then when the tourniquet's taken off, the blood is going to rush and that is going to cause a lot of problems. Another one is suck the venom out. Do not do this. It's going to cause more damage around the wound, scar tissue. Uh, it doesn't really get the venom out. It's just going to put you in a bigger world of hurt. Your best thing to do, again, is stay calm, get your heart rate down, and either walk out or call for help. You know, don't forget, this is their home. You know, we're out in their home visiting. Don't kill the snakes. I'm seeing a lot of pictures of dead snakes on the trail. Now, the snakes are very useful. They're killing the rats and mice, everything that is you know, potentially carrying a disease out there. You know, some of them are eating other snakes. Respect their home, they'll respect you. Give them a good you know, six, seven foot distance when you see them. They're not gonna come slithering after you. They're not gonna jump out of a tree after you. Now on, different trails there are more aggressive snakes and yes they will come after you but the ones out here are fairly slow if they do start moving towards you just back up you know find another way around and you should be fine so in that note everybody stay safe out there and thanks again for watching as always please like subscribe or comment down below